In the thrilling journey of the last decade, Wall Street Bets has transformed from a modest subreddit where stock enthusiasts exchanged ideas into a captivating arena where individuals dare to roll the dice with their hard-earned fortunes, all in the daring pursuit of uncovering that elusive treasure trove of wealth. Some of these brave individuals managed to end up on the winning end of their trade. However, the vast majority of traders take devastating losses and end up like this guy. <coughs> In today's video, we're going to be going over the Wall Street Bets iceberg. For those of you that don't know, an iceberg chart starts off with more well-known and basic information and slowly transitions into more obscure entries. Believe it or not, some stories from Wall Street Bets can get pretty dark, so I'm going to be saving the more disturbing entries for a part 2 of the iceberg. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. The first entry on the iceberg is the GameStop and AMC craze. When thinking of Wall Street Bets, a lot of people think of early 2020. 21 when GameStop and AMC were first popping off. This makes a lot of sense because this is when Wall Street Bets gained its first major wave of mainstream media attention. This time period has so far been the peak of Wall Street Bets in terms of actual member growth within the subreddit. Most people are already aware of this financial situation, but for those of you that were living under a rock during the pandemic, here is a brief summary. In a thrilling tale of financial insurgency, a band of everyday investors from the r slash Wall Street Bets subreddit Reddit boldly challenged established Wall Street Bets players, igniting a trading frenzy centered around GameStop and AMC Entertainment, leveraging the concept of short squeezes against hedge funds that had bet on these companies' downfall. These retail traders harnessed the viral power of social media to catapult stock prices to astonishing prices. This David and Goliath saga not only disrupted the conventional financial landscape, but also ignited crucial conversations about market integrity. The potency of online communities and the evolution of investment practices. The next entry on the iceberg is Guh. <coughs> Guh is referring to the iconic video featuring Reddit user Control the Narrative. Control the Narrative is an absolute legend from Wall Street Bets who used Robinhood Gold to basically hack the amount of margin that he could borrow. Trading options with margin is already risky enough, but Control the Narrative decided that he either needed to go big or go home. Deciding to go big, he used a now patched Robinhood loophole that allowed him to surpass the 2x margin limit. He worked his way up from 25 times the actual amount of money he had in his account. He now had about $60,000 worth of buying power, despite not actually having any of this money. Control the Narrative took this leverage and purchased a wide variety of out-of-the-money Apple puts. If this went well, Control the Narrative would have successfully made a sizable profit using a glitch in Robinhood's app. He was so eager to showcase his gains that he even recorded himself looking at his puts the next morning. However, as we all know, things didn't really go according to plan. And I think this is pretty easy to tell based on his reaction in the video. <clears throat> It's not always fun losing $50,000 that you don't have, so let's move on to a more lighthearted story. Dogecoin is an entry that's of course referring to the cryptocurrency with the name Dogecoin. Created back in 2013 by Billy Marcus and Jackson Palmer, the coin served as a playful and meme-inspired alternative to Bitcoin. It drew on the popular Doge internet meme that featured a Shiba Inu dog. Although this coin was initially started as a joke, and of course to this day it is just a meme Coin, it had an active and welcoming Reddit and Twitter community. These groups would hold charitable events like the Doge for Water campaign that aimed to raise money for Kenya's water crisis. Despite everything I just said, let's get real. Most people know Dogecoin because of its massive spike in 2021, similar timing to GameStop and AMC. Fueled by social media attention and mainstream figures like Elon Musk, the price of the coin would rise by about 21,000%. A plethora of copycat coins would be created, such as the Shiba Inu, but all of these cryptocurrencies would steadily decline, including Dogecoin itself, now hovering around 6 cents. The entry grifters slash fake gurus is referring to all the people you see trying to sell you on the idea of success, at least when it comes to making money in the stock market. On one hand, we have people like Ricky Gutierrez, who says that 1% a day gains are a realistic goal. This is obviously insane, but who cares about the levels of insanity when you're trying to get rich. Some gurus promise things like 10x monthly gains, and I mean, come on, who wants Ricky's measly 1% gains when you can get 10 times your money? 1% a day? Pfft. 
you gotta pump those numbers up. Although you may think these people are already bad enough promising these crazy gains, there's only one thing worse than a fake guru, and that's a grifter. Look at someone like Graham Stephan, and let me tell you, his channel is an absolute piece of work. One day, he's like, ah, ah, the stock market, it's crashing, no, sell your house, sell, and then the next day, he's like, what's up, Graham, it's guys here, and the stock market is looking better than ever. Roots is an entry simply just summarizing the start of Wall Street bets. Approximately a decade ago, Jamie Rogozinski, weary of his investment style being likened to gambling, founded the Wall Street Bets subreddit with a clear mission, to provide a platform where individuals could openly discuss high-risk trades and aim for quick gains without hesitation. Today, this core essence remains unchanged, with options trading reigning supreme as the favored method among Wall Street Bets users for its potential to rapidly build or dismantle fortunes. An intriguing twist in the story emerged when Rogozinski was banned for attempting to monetize the community, ultimately leading to Opinion is Unpopular and ZJZ stepping in as the new subreddit operators, a change widely embraced by the community. The entry DFV is referring to a Reddit user named Deep Fucking Value, who managed to turn a $53,000 investment into nearly $50 million. Deep Fucking Value is not only a Wall Street Bets legend, but THE Wall Street Bets legend. In September 2019, Keith Gill, aka Deep Fucking Value, invested $53,000 in GameStop, sharing his position on Wall Street Bets. Despite skepticism, his humor-laden diligence gained a following. As GameStop's prospects shifted with billionaire Ryan Cohen's investment in 2020, Gill's conviction inspired others. The stock surged, hitting its peak in January 2021, turning Gill's initial investment into over $48 million. Gill's investment brought the short squeeze idea to light, which we covered in the previous entry. Brokers' trading restrictions exposed market manipulation suspicions, leading to lawsuits and congressional scrutiny for Gill. His journey sparked widespread interest in stock market fairness and power dynamics leaving an enduring impact on internet-driven financial discussions. Short squeeze is an entry that's referring to a situation in the stock market where the price of a stock rises so high that hedge funds who are shorting the stock have to actually go ahead and purchase the stock to limit their financial losses. This then causes the price of the stock to go up because hedge funds now have to purchase this stock that they were originally shorting. That wraps up the first layer of the iceberg, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Lawsuit is an an entry referring to the fact that the founder of Wall Street Bets has sued Reddit. The man behind Wall Street Bets is Jamie Rogozinski, and he created the subreddit back in 2012. Obviously, the early years of Wall Street Bets weren't so significant in regards to this entry, and legal matters wouldn't really come into play until 2021. In the year 2020, Rogozinski would have his role as a moderator terminated due to the fact that Reddit alleged he was quote-unquote attempting to monetize a community. Rogozinski wanted to trademark the Wall Street Bets name, but according to him, Reddit aggressively opposed his application to file a trademark and instead filed one for themselves. Obviously, I'm not too sure of all the legal details behind this situation, but regardless, it's pretty interesting to see that the person who created Wall Street Bets isn't even a part of the community anymore. The entry banned is referring to the fact that the Wall Street Bets Discord server was banned for quote-unquote hateful and discriminatory discriminatory content. Many people originally speculated that the server was banned because of financial fraud and inflating stock prices, but a Discord representative came out and said that the server had been on their radar for a while due to hate speech, glorifying violence, and spreading misinformation. Despite Discord making this statement, many people speculate that the server was really taken down to help hedge funds from stopping their losses and basically so that way they could help them stop losing so much money. No matter what you believe, Leave, this doesn't really matter as the server was officially taken down in January of 2021, so it has been long gone at this point. 2000x Tesla is an entry referring to an iconic trade that a member of Wall Street Bets posted three years ago. Having only $500, you may think it's impossible to achieve a million dollar gain, especially in the short time period of only a year, but this user somehow managed to pull off the impossible. In the summer of 2019, 
2019, this user purchased 20 call contracts that expired in January of 2021. Obviously, Tesla ran up a sizable amount during this time, and it's safe to say that this would work in the favor of the user's portfolio. Initially spending only $460, this screenshot shows that the user got to the point of having nearly $930,000 of equity in these calls. Deep Value holds his legendary status on Wall Street bets, but this user definitely gets their own spot for having this breathtaking 205,000% gain. The entry GME Granny is referring to a user on Wall Street Bets who posted a photo showcasing their 102-year-old grandma's position in GameStop. A lot of people like to throw around the term diamond hands, but let's be honest here, you really can't say you have diamond hands until you've held a stock for nearly 30 years. This user's grandma purchased 168 shares of GameStop back in August of 1995. Since then, the stock has gone through two splits, bringing the actual amount of shares she holds to 1,344 shares. This means that she had $109,000 worth of equity at the height of the stock squeeze. Not bad for what was originally an $1,100 investment. Visual Mod is referencing the bot that lives on the Wall Street Bet subreddit. Some people doubt that he's actually a bot and suspect that he's really a person, but no one knows for sure. When someone called out Visual Mod for being a Filipino Brit shit poster who gets paid zero dollars an hour to respond to every post, Visual Mod responded with, that is an inaccurate statement. I am not Filipino or British. I am an AI developed by a hedge fund, and my hourly rate is immeasurable as I do not require payment for my services. Not selling game stock, a user who joined the subreddit during the GameStop and AMC frenzy two years ago made an unforgettable entrance by declaring his intent to go all in, presumably on GameStop given his username and timing. Soon after, he posted a screenshot displaying a staggering 31% loss for the week, yet he remained steadfast, proclaiming he had diamond hands. Following substantial losses from GameStop and AMC, he sought solace in Sundial, hoping to offset his previous setbacks, but his fortunes continued to dwindle. However, his most ill-timed move occurred on January 29th of 2021, when he purchased one GameStop share for $385, coinciding with the stock's catastrophic 80% drop the next day. Despite these blunders, he persisted, becoming captivated by iTub, a Reddit community with just 55 members, emphasizing his knack for choosing underperforming stocks. A month ago, he resurfaced on Wall Street bets, lamenting that the group had been his worst financial decision, accompanied by a screenshot illustrating his nearly $20,000 loss, equivalent to over 67% of his portfolio. Seeking help and expressing his desire to stop losing money, he received advice from fellow users to refrain from trading options. Despite these well-intentioned suggestions, he returned six days later with an additional $800 loss expressing hopelessness, compounded by the revelation that his entire portfolio consisted of borrowed money with exorbitant interest rates. At this juncture, not selling game stock finds himself in dire financial straits, desperately seeking a way out. One can only hope he has absorbed valuable lessons and will refrain from taking risky investment opportunities. The entry 0DTE is short for zero days till expiration. Some might say that it's also short for zero days till evaporation because that's what tends to happen to the value of these contracts. Trading zero day till expiration contracts is usually the most risky thing you can do in the stock market, especially if you're trading with markets. Margin. Since these contracts have the potential of expiring worthless the same day you buy them, you better hope the stock doesn't swing against the direction you want it to go. This leaves us with two types of screenshots, and these two types of screenshots lead us to our next entry on the iceberg. The duality of Wall Street bets is of course talking about the fact that there are always going to be winners and there are always going to be losers on Wall Street bets. For every 10x gain you see posted to the subreddit, there's 10 other 100% losses. The next entry on the iceberg is Michael Brrr. 
Burry. Burry's investing career is a compelling narrative of a medical doctor turned financial maverick. While most physicians diagnose ailments, Burry's diagnosis was the housing market's impending collapse in the mid-2000s. He translated his medical precision into financial analysis, making a contrarian bet against the U.S. housing bubble that few understood at the time. As the world witnessed the devastating financial crisis, Burry's Scion Capital emerged as an unlikely hero, turning his meticulous research into a billion-dollar profit. His story, immortalized in books and film, showcases the transformative power of deep analysis and contrarian thinking in the unpredictable world of finance, solidifying his place as a legendary investor who saw what others missed. More recently, he placed a multi-million dollar bet against Tesla right before the stock began its decline in 2022. His thought process behind this play was similar to his thought process in 2008 and likely generated him hundreds of millions of dollars. Fosterion 18, a longtime Wall Street Bets member, embarked on an incredible journey to wealth, starting with a respectable $600,000. While his four-year story on the subreddit saw modest activity, it wasn't until May 10th of this year that Fosterion 18's insane trading spree took off. He made a shrewd move by purchasing NDX calls expiring the same day, resulting in a jaw-dropping gain of $172,000 as NDX surged $150. Just a week later, he returned with a post titled, A 10x per day keeps the bears away, backed by a screenshot showcasing another mammoth profit of over $106,000 which is an 800% gain. Instead of succumbing to the allure of huge wins and ruining his portfolio, Fosterion 18 continued his streak of triumphs. In a single day, his portfolio skyrocketed to over $1 million from positions in AI, Nvidia, and others, prompting him to sell and secure his profits. Subsequently, he consistently posted astronomical gains, surpassing $5.9 million, culminating in a mind-boggling daily profit of $2.75 million. His success illustrates the addictive allure of Wall Street bets, where fortunes are both won and lost in extraordinary fashion. Fosterion 18's astounding journey has the potential to make him a billionaire or secure his future family's financial legacy, highlighting the incredible possibilities within the subreddit. If I Was Hayek is a currently suspended Reddit user who supplied us with this monstrosity of a screenshot. Economic stability was looking a little bit rocky in March of 2020, and If I Was Hayek sensed an incoming market decline. Since people would have to stay indoors, If I Was Hayek thought it would be a good idea to load up on some puts for Disney and Carnival. He dropped $150,000 on these contracts and patiently waited to see if his investment would pay off. Only a few days later, his puts would launch to an outstanding $4 million in value which is a 27x gain on his initial investment. With this amount of money, If I Was Hayek could have easily retired and lived off dividends for the rest of his life, but he was already hooked. You may have noticed that his portfolio no longer has $4 million in it, and that's because he held these puts until they were basically worthless. Obviously, stocks were only down for a brief period in 2020. After that, they rallied and continued to rise like there was no tomorrow. That being said, If I Was Hayek admits that he messed up and says that his losses keep him up at night. His desire to grow his account to the eight-figure mark led to his ultimate downfall. Despite his losses, it's important to learn from stories like this and realize how powerful greed actually is. The entry Elon Musk is referring to the fact that some people accuse Elon Musk of market manipulation. The most prominent example of this is, of course, the rise of Dogecoin. He made promises of sending Doge to the moon and constantly tweeted about the coin on his Twitter. Obviously, a lot of these scenarios can be played off as jokes, but for someone who has as much influence as Elon Musk, it's not hard to see how much he can potentially profit from doing something as simple as tweeting a picture of a dog. TikTok strats is an entry referring to all the lovely stock-related content that comes from TikTok. It kind of ties together with the fake guru entry, but stock content on TikTok takes it to a new 
new extreme. You may see content like this on the app and think that it's satire, and sure, maybe like 10% of it is, but most of the stuff you see is actually non-satirical. These crazy TikTokers can get away with it because their content is directed towards people who don't really know anything about finance or the stock market in general. With these secret TikTok investing methods, you can get rich in as little as 30 days. All you gotta do is double your money on Monday, triple it on Tuesday, 10 exit on Wednesday, and just keep the cycle going. The best thing about it is that if you go to the comment sections of these types of videos, people will comment things like, oh my god, he's dropping gems, or oh, he's giving free sauce, thank you bro, thank you, which, you know, is all pretty comical, but at the same time, you gotta realize that most people on the app are just little kids. The next entry on the iceberg is Dejula, or Dehula, I don't know. Regardless of how his name is pronounced, this Wall Street Bets user decided that he wanted to make a small fortune very quickly. He planned on doing this by purchasing $90,000 worth of calls on Tesla. He didn't get this $90,000 straight from his pocket though. The Jula would have to max out two of his credit cards and a home equity line of credit. None of this mattered though, because he knew that these calls were going to make him rich. Despite his desire for success, things over at Tesla didn't really go to plan. The Cybertruck launch didn't really do so well, and the stock dropped over 4%. The Jula would pull a control the narrative on us, and he decided to record his reaction to his losses the next morning. Although his reaction isn't as iconic as control the narratives, he actually lost a tad bit more money than him. Not to mention, both of these individuals were losing money that they didn't really have. After this whole incident, Dejula's portfolio would sink to $30,000, and on top of that, he would also get fired from his job. With all this new free time on his hands, he decided that his best course of action would be to start day trading full time. That December, he would bet 80% of his portfolio on Tesla calls that expired a few months out. Surprisingly, Dejula would rake in over $80,000 thousand dollars just one week later as Tesla skyrocketed. When all said and done, he walked away with over $208,000 in gains and decided to stop day trading. He paid off his loans, and overall he ended the story on a good note. Now, let's explore the journey of Legitimate Listen 72, a 19-year-old who recently inherited $50,000, likely from their late grandfather. Before diving into Wall Street bets, Legitimate Listen frequently coin and prize pick subreddits, perhaps an unexpected segue into the world of high-risk options trading. On June 14th, they would make their first significant Wall Street bets post, sharing a screenshot of substantial losses, questioning their approach with, am I doing it right? Despite a perplexing 42% loss in a bullish spy market, legitimate listen wasn't deterred. Merely a day later, they returned with another screenshot, displaying a staggering 61.92% loss, totaling over $12,000. Seeking advice on recovery, they embarked on a third trade, but it led to a devastating 100.43% loss, with legitimate listen feeling like they were letting their late grandfather down. Their financial situation looked grim, leaving questions about the remaining $30,000 from the inheritance. If preserved, investing it wisely, perhaps in an index fund, could offer a brighter financial future given their young age of 19. Martin Shkreli is the next entry on the iceberg, and let me tell you, I know I said Deep Value was the legend of Wall Street bets, but Martin Shkreli takes it to a whole nother level. Early on, Shkreli wasn't your average kid. Instead of being interested in sports like everyone else his age, he was interested in the stock market. He even says that he would play chess with some fully grown man at his building and discuss his stock picks. At the age of just 16, he would drop out of high school and pursue a career on Wall Street. Two years later, he would recommend shorting the stock Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. The stock would drop tremendously, and Shkreli would bring in loads of profit to the fund he was a part of. This would lead to him being investigated by the SEC, but they couldn't really find anything against him. Fast forward a couple years, and Shkreli would have his own fund where he used one primary strategy. This strategy involved betting against biotech companies. Shkreli would look at biotech companies that he thought were overvalued and short them, hoping the FDA would come out and say something that sends the price of the stock plummeting. This strategy actually worked out amazingly, until one day where he 
he managed to lose it all. His fund was left with nothing, but he did now have his own biotech company called Retrofin. This is when he would become notorious for changing the price of a pill called Daraprim from $13 to $750. Although this may sound like a purely evil thing to do, it was actually done with the intention of putting a spotlight on a drug that was 70 years old and didn't really work too well, but regardless of what his intentions were, people hated him and started to view him as a villain. In December of 2015, Shkreli would be arrested for multiple accounts of securities fraud, but would be released only a day later after paying a $5 million bail. The same day he got released, he started to occasionally stream on Twitch. In 2016, Shkreli would join Wall Street Bets and begin to show his degenerate side. Most people still viewed Shkreli as the bad guy, but at this point, he no longer cared and even decided to play into the character. Things were relatively smooth sailing for Shkreli, but this would come to an end on August 4th of 2017. On this day, he would be found guilty of two accounts of securities fraud and one account of conspiracy to commit securities fraud. For someone like Shkreli, this usually wouldn't be that big of a deal, but unfortunately, he had his bail revoked because he made a tweet offering a $5,000 reward for a strand of Hillary Clinton's hair. This was seen as a solicitation of assault and Shkreli would be sent away for seven years in prison. While in prison, he would write letters to those who wanted to hear from him. He states, let my situation be a cautionary tale on the perils of YOLO. Despite this, YOLO, that concludes the second layer of the iceberg, let's move on to the next layer. The entry Iron Man is referring to the time Robert Downey Jr. went to Wall Street for a documentary in the 90s. Here's a short clip of that. If money is evil, then that building is hell. This is the most obnoxious group of money hungry, low IQ, high energy, jackrabbit fuck the September effect refers to the historical trend of stock markets experiencing weaker performance in the month of September. This pattern is often attributed to factors like investors returning from summer vacations, quarterly earnings reports, and historical market events occurring in September. However, it's important to note that this is just a historical observation, and market behavior can be influenced by a wide range of factors. Therefore, while it's a noteworthy trend, it's not a guaranteed outcome outcome and should be considered alongside current market conditions and individual investment strategies. And yes, it is September right now. Apprehensive Floor 78, a 40-year-old man, posted a significant story on the Wall Street Bets subreddit. Two years ago, he was feeling trapped in the daily grind, battling personal and career issues, and struggling with addictive tendencies involving alcohol and gambling. Seeking a way out, he made a bold move. He converted his 401k to a self-directed brokerage account, quit his job, and delved into risky options trading. Unfortunately, his portfolio took a devastating hit, particularly due to a risky bet on Bed Bath & Beyond. Despite being over $400,000 in debt, he embarked on a journey of self-improvement, quitting drinking, getting in shape, and finding a supportive partner. With a new remote job and a brighter outlook, Apprehensive Floor is on a positive trajectory, though so rebuilding his portfolio will definitely take some time. While his story offers hope, it's a cautionary tale about the perils of tampering with retirement funds in your 40s. The next entry on the iceberg is Bill. Bill Huang's financial journey is a roller coaster ride through the world of high stakes investing. Born into modest circumstances in South Korea, Huang honed his investment skills and worked for Tiger Management, known for its focus on fundamental analysis. His investment strategy was a blend of long term investing and overall innovative thinking. Huang sought great companies with growth potential and leveraged his positions using total return swaps, a method of borrowing money. This approach led to remarkable success, turning $200 million into $20 billion in less than a decade. However, it's a double-edged sword, as excessive leverage can amplify gains and losses. His story underscores the thrill and peril of the stock market, where predicting the future 
future remains a challenging pursuit for all, from broke retail traders to billionaire hedge fund managers. Movie Funds is referring to the fact that the Wolf of Wall Street movie was allegedly produced with stolen funds. The US Justice Department filed a civil suit seeking all future profits and royalties from the film, alleging its involvement in an international money laundering scheme connected to a Malaysian development firm established by the country's prime minister. This legal drama aimed to recover $1 billion in assets acquired with allegedly embezzled Malaysian funds. The suit revealed that over $100 million from the stolen funds went into producing the movie, which grossed over $392 million worldwide. Malaysian officials as a whole weren't really the ones to blame. The one who was really pulling the strings with this fraud was a man by the name of Joe Lau. He would siphon money from the Malaysian fund and use it to live a lavish lifestyle and fund things completely unrelated to Malaysia. This controversy shed light on the misuse of a fund meant for the well-being of the Malaysian people by corrupt officials, leading to a scandal that touched Hollywood and the financial world alike. Lucky Lucy is an entry referring to the tale of your ordinary Wall Street Bets user. Nine months ago, Lucky Lucy expressed frustration at the rapid shifts in sentiment on Wall Street Bets, highlighting the unpredictability of stock predictions. Despite this, Lucky Lucy initially found success on the subreddit, providing a thorough analysis of Apple and hinting at potential gains. However, their later posts took a bizarre turn, delving into unrelated topics and making perplexing predictions based on questionable logic. Despite some profitable trades, Lucky Lucy eventually experienced a massive financial loss, leading to a deficit of over $600,000. It was later revealed that this money came from a loan secured against a shared property, leaving Lucky Lucy in dire financial straits. In a moment of desperation, they turned to a religious subreddit contemplating a change in their life path. Despite these intentions, they returned with posts showing scratch-off tickets, indicating ongoing risky behavior. The entry Robinhood Lying is referring to the controversy that the Robinhood investing app was involved in. One of the primary ways Robinhood makes money is through a practice called payment for order flow. When a user places a trade on Robinhood, the order is often executed by a third-party market maker or high-frequency trading firm. These firms pay Robinhood for the right to execute these orders, a practice known as payment for order flow. While this allows Robinhood to offer commission-free trading, critics argue that it may result in users getting slightly worse prices on their trades, as these market makers may profit from the bid-ask spread. So basically, this means that although Robinhood doesn't charge you a literal commission, you really are paying a commission in the price of whatever you're paying for the stock. The entry drinks is referring to a casino in Vegas that offers Wall Street Bets themed drinks. Taking a look at the menu, you can see they have things like the short squeezed strawberry lemon drop, the diamond hands guava daiquiri, the to the moon watermelon cooler, and some others. Reddit user MaybeAwesome22 has been an active member of stock related subreddits for over a year. They frequently post about stocks with potential for short squeezes, a trend they continued for about a year. Fast forward to January 27th, Maybe Awesome made a post discussing the increasing short interest in Carvana, a company whose stock had plummeted to $7.70 from all-time highs of $360, mostly due to legal issues in Illinois. Hedge funds saw an opportunity to short this stock. Despite the company's downfall, members of the r slash short squeeze community identified massive short squeeze potential due to heavy short interest. In a remarkable turn of events, Carvana's share price surged over 100% within just one week. Maybe Awesome shared their success on Reddit with a screenshot showing Carvana's 40% jump in just a single day. Other subreddit members considered selling at $14.20 to secure their gains but opted to hold with diamond hands. Unfortunately, this decision did 
didn't pan out as Carvana's squeeze lost momentum, and the stock gradually dropped back to the $6 range over the next few months. Maybe Awesome reduced their post about Carvana during this decline. However, they returned to the short squeeze subreddit when Carvana surged by 88% in one week, fueled by beating earnings expectations. Over the following months, Carvana saw nearly 900% gains at its peak, causing excitement among short squeeze enthusiasts. On July 12th, Maybe Awesome returned to share their incredible 4,000% gain from Carvana, including over 52,000 dollars worth of calls expiring in August, with confirmation of six figures worth of profit already secured. While Carvana's stock recently dropped by over 17%, Maybe Awesome profits remain substantial. The stock's future remains uncertain, but Maybe Awesome's timely profit-taking deserves congratulations for the remarkable gains.